from Hezekiah Lewis. Okay. I was basically a teacher. You know, I started to teach when I was 14, and I retired at um, the retiring age. I had to be 55, so I retired at age 55. Okay, and where do you currently reside? My, um, my family, well, my immediate family lived here, but um, my original family, uh, they lived at Calder, in the, just below the area they call Acres. Okay. <coughs> they were not really living in Acres, but just a way down, because Acres was right on the hill. I see. You see, but a little way down. That's where I lived there. Called the whole place Calder. Okay, but you're now you're living in Villa. Yeah, I'm living in Villa. Um, well, as a matter of fact, I left Calder very early um, in the uh, in the sixties. I lived at Annisville for some time, and uh, after we moved from Annisville, came here at Villa. I see. Okay. And um, where were you born? Were you born? I was Calder? born in Calder. And what about your parents, their names, and, and what they used to do? Uh, well, my father was Thomas Lewis. My mother was um, Alice Lewis. My father was a farmer. My mother was a house housewife or housekeeper, whatever you want, because that's, you know, as she was. Okay. What about your brothers and your sisters? Their, their um, names? Well, I have seven brothers. Well, there are eight of us. I am the last brother. And equally, there were eight sisters. Well, the last sister is still alive. So seven brothers and seven sisters have gone. Only the two of us, the last girl and myself. Can you tell me that? Can you recall the names, all of the names? Take the boys, Solomon, Alexander, Timothy, Zacchaeus, Ulysses, Abel, Isaac, Bertram, that should be eight boys. And the, and the girls were Matilda, Almeida, Mahalia, Maud, Pearl, or Paulina, Erlene, and Ina. That's eight, eight, eight girls. Well, it were eight boys and eight girls. So 16 of you in total. Mm -hmm. And uh, you remember, what, 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 what were their occupations? What did they do, most of them? Well, for the girls, they were mostly homemakers. In other words, they were at home, yeah? Okay. And the boys, well, the, in the generally, uh, uh, many of them were, put it so, <coughs> they were all farmers. But there were different um, periods when different ones had different occupations. For example, my brother Zacchaeus, he was a noted painter. My brother Timothy, <coughs> he was a carpenter. And, um, well, Alexander, he went, that's the second brother, he went to Trinidad, and he was a businessman in Trinidad. My oldest brother, Solomon, he lived here, and as I said, he was a farmer and, you know, a family man, and so on. Well, my, um, my brother Abel, he, he um, went over to Venezuela, spent some time there, came back to Trinidad, then came home and went back to Trinidad. Uh, he traveled most. Uh, Ulysses, Ulysses was, um, what they call, a laborer, and at the same time, an, an, um, an agricultural man, agriculturist, because that's how, how he lived. Isaac was a teacher and I followed. Well, Isaac remained a teacher until he migrated to England in 1956. And then he went into accounting. He um, completed his accountancy course, so he was a chartered accountant. I remain as a teacher here, 
I retired in 1987, I think. And at the time of this recording, how old are you? Well, the 19th of May, I would be 90 years. What about your children and, and their and My children, parents? well, I have Don, he's an accountant, the boy, Paul, he is um, a businessman. The other boy, Ross, he is a nuclear engineer. My daughters, uh, the first daughter, well, the only two daughters we have. The first one is an audiologist, and the second one, that is the one here, she's a medical doctor. Are you familiar with your aunts and your uncles and, and the names? The aunts and uncles, not many of them. <clears throat> I remember one they called Auntie Sukmari. That was the Pereira branch, Pereira side. Um, on my, on my uh, mother's side, I had the person they called Chacha Sam. Uh, that is Hobbin them father, Vincent Thomas' father. He was my uncle on my mother's side. And uh, Henry Thomas, they, call, they used to call him Lily. And then there was Jonathan Thomas, they used to call him Dull Dull. Those were on my mother's side. As far as I know, my, my father, he had one brother here in Calder. He was Edward, where you see the Lewis um, on the main road, like when you leave the Adventist church and you're going up. Mm -hmm. There was uh, a time there when the Edward Lewis lived there. That was my father's brother. And I understand also, I think I never met him, one who lived in Bible. They used to call him Bechu. Bechu. I don't know whether it was Bechu Lewis or what. All I knew, they used to say, he was Bechu. And then father had another brother who went to Trinidad. They used to call him Uncle Willie. So his name was William. Um, as to my mother relatives, as I tell you, you have Jonathan or Doldol. Henry or Lily and uh, Adolphus or Chacha Sam. Those were the uncles on my mother's side. And only one, well, as I say, I knew Uncle Edward, that was my brother. He lived in, in Calder. But the other one, Bechu, and, well, Bechu, I understand. He lived in Bible, somewhere about there. I don't know about the others. What about your grandparents? Did you know their names and, and what they did? No, I didn't know the grandparents. I didn't know them. Uh, I had a, a faint memory of my grandfather when he lay dying. That's on my mother's side. But and he was a Thomas. Okay. But nothing, nothing further. Okay. But you you recall being told where they lived? Mm -hmm. Oh, they lived on on the. Put it so on the eastern side of the called the village, because they live more facing Argyle than we. We live more on the western side, I see. and so on. Okay. What about the other relatives that you remember? Uh, tell me about those. Maybe your cousins or those other family connections that you had. Well, <coughs> as I tell you, the the Thomases. All the Thomases were related to us because they came from the same area family. My mother was a, was a Thomas. Her brother, Jonathan, Lily, that is the one they call Henry, and uh, Adolphus, that is Vincent Thomas, their father, and Jonathan. Those are the three brothers I know. Uh, uh, and I never heard of any other brother. But they had, you know, a lot of children. Uh, the the Thomas had a lot because Lily had quite a few, Jonathan and Adolphus. Okay. And what were the 
occupations? Uh, what, what do they do? Well, generally, I would say they were all farmers because farmers. That, that's how they survived. Okay. Did you get any information from your parents that uh, their forefathers were from India? And maybe some yeah, other names? Uh, names? Well, all I remember, my father, he said they used to call him Ramlal. That's my father. But I don't know uh, the names for the grandparents and so on. But I know they came from India, came to St. Lucia, and then came down to St. Vincent. But where did they settle? You, you recall where, where they settled when they came? Well, as far as I know, a few of them went to Argyle, but the majority stayed in the Calder area. Okay, so they're mostly between Argyle and yes, Calder region. Yes. Okay. Um, tell me about your earlier days, your days growing up. Um, <laughs> some of the things that, that <laughs> I see you laughing. Some of the things that, that transpired when you were growing up that you remember most, you know, you know, where you lived, um, well, religious connections and all of that. Well, we, uh, religiously we were Methodists, so that you can well keep that. Okay. Um, as to how we survived, well, my father was a farmer. He had uh, seven acres of land. He used to work the land, and that's how he supported his family. And Saturday, well, we had a big hollow, a big flat area. I think it's about three acres because the whole land was about seven or more acres. Well, in this flat area were breadfruit trees, mango trees, cocoa, coconut, lime, all the fruits they can get. Well, on Saturdays, when the breadfruit season is in, people from Stubbs and Victoria Village used to come in and buy breadfruit and go back out. You know, and uh, the other fruits, we use them like the oranges and so on, mango. We had quite a bit of mango and so on. Okay. And um, in terms of some of the Indian terms, you remember any of those and any references they passed around to your grandparents that you would still hear or you heard during that time? Well, the only name I remember is Ramlal. I don't remember nothing more. <laughs> <laughs> I don't remember nothing more. Yeah. What about any of the, the, the utensils, any of the implements that they used? Remember any of those? Like what they used to cook on and some of the tools and some of the farming tools, etc. Well, uh, what they, what I know I met my mother with is a coal pot and they used to cook on the coal pot and the firewood, you know. Mm -hmm. That's the other one. Okay. Uh, those are the chief things. Um, nothing else. Uh, that's how they lived. Okay. How would you say life is, is different now and, and if so, how? how is oh life? yes, life is completely different because um, <coughs> in those days as in the early days, um, most most of the people who got married, that is like the daughter, put it so, the brothers and the sisters who got married, whether in our family or the other families in Calder, many of them still lived in the parents' home until such time as they were able to you know, put up a little building of their own. But very often when they get married, they used to still be at home with the parents until, you know, maybe two, three, four years and they see, are they able to get somewhere to live. Okay. Tell us some of your most treasured memories about childhood when you were growing up. Some well, of the things you remember most. what I remember when I was growing up, I had to run from the place they call Coco right down to Stubbs Government School. <laughs> and if you reach late, it licks in your skin. <laughs> it licks in your skin. <laughs> so, well, in those early days, I mean, we were boys. And my brother in England, who passed away just uh, about a year. Um, we had to attend to the animals and everything. And then you had to get up and make sure you get ready to go to school at Stubbs. And you run from Calder to Stubbs so as to be there for nine o'clock. <laughs> because if you reach after nine, it's flap, flap, flap on your back. That's how it was. 
Um, but all in, all in all, we enjoyed it because, you know, we were not sickly or, or anything of the nature. We were quite healthy. So it was a good exercise running from Calder, what the place they call Coco. Uh, uh, some people don't know that. And you go right down, past to Bonham, go down, reach Stubbs, go on the main road, and then go into the Stubbs Government School. Okay. And I'm guessing as you got older and became a teacher yourself, you understood the reason why uh, that, that happened as a child growing up. Yeah, because there was nothing else. <laughs> you know, um, I started to teach at age 14. I started to teach at the Stubbs Government School. I taught there for three years. Then I went to Morocco and I taught for three years. And then the school in Calder opened um, and I, well, let me see. I taught at Stubbs for three years. I went to uh, Morocco and I taught there for three years first and then come back and I spent one term. After the three years at Morocco, I went up to Richland Park and I taught at Richland Park for a term. And then I came back to Calder and I taught there um, for some time. And later on, I was shifted, or uh, better word, transferred to Union Island, where I spent one year. And at the end of the one year, I was again shifted <laughs> to my room, where I spent two years. So I spent three years in the Grenadines. And then I came back on the mainland, and so on. Well, as I said, eventually I I became head teacher at the called the school. I I think it I can't remember now, but I know I was there with the man they used to call Marcy Alexander. He was from Victoria Village. Mm -hmm. um, he was the headmaster, I worked there under him. And then after, you know, moving from place to place, I re returned to Calder in 19, at the Calder School, at 1973. So I was there, I had to fill in. I ran the school for about three, four years. I never got a cent more, you know, and the salary. And the salary, no, no. And then in 1975, I was promoted to headship. And uh, in 1987, just finished oh, teaching. I stopped teaching in 1987, joined my wife in the bookshop that she started. That's Ross Bookshop? Yeah, in 1982. She started the bookshop in 1982. I retired in 1987, and I just joined her, and we ran the bookshop until 2013. Because after she died, she died in 2013. I closed up the bookshop. I never had any more thing to do with the bookshop. It was named after our last son, because Ross is the last one. We had, we have three sons. Tell me about uh, the difficult times you faced growing up. Uh, I know there must have been some, some hardships for you. Some hard yeah, well, I'm going to give you one, uh, if not more than one, one. When we had to bathe, we used to have to run to go around a place they call Jack Butter. And on the way, you look for a banana tree and you put down one of the branch and you cut it, you walk with a knife, and you take the knife and you cut it. And you cut off the, the, the leaf, the leafy part, and you walk with that. And you put it in the river at Jack Gutter. And you put a big stone on it. And the water run on the stone and on the, the um, banana hollow. And it formed like a spouting, so you bathe under that. If you didn't do that, you had to go and bathe just naked in the water because that is how 
Well, that is how the the um, the majority of ladies bed, you know, they used to bed in a place they call Mahu. There was a river there, and that's where they went and they bed. The men used to run go down, go wrong by the place they call Jack Gutter. So we all used to go wrong there, and as I tell you, you make your own spout and you you pull down a branch from the banana tree. And you walk with a knife, you cut it apart, and you put it there in the river, and you put a stone on it. <laughs> <laughs> and, and the water comes over at the spouting, and you bathe. And when you leave, if you mind to throw away the spouting, you throw it away. If not, you leave it there for others. What about anything that you would like to change growing up? Any, anything in life that you, if today you had the opportunity to change it, you would? I don't think I need to change anything. I mean, I'm quite, I'm quite comfortable. The, the children, the five of them, they were able to go to school, secondary school, and who had to go to university, went on to university and so on. So for me, though it was rough, yet they were all able to, you know, go through the system. Okay. Because they, they, um, well, as I tell you, it's five, three boys and two girls. They all went to primary school, secondary school, and then on to university. All of them went to university. They have uh, a university degree and what other profession they have entered into. You know. Okay. So if you had the opportunity to change something now in terms of the country, St. Vincent and the Grenadines, what would you like to see done differently? Well, I, I would like to say that um, more people are given, uh, you know, a chance to de develop financially and otherwise. In other words, help them even to start a little business mm -hmm. where they can earn a little money for themselves. I don't think I want to change anything much because as far as I know, the children who are away, those are the people I know, they always consider their relatives back home and they send something for them. Okay, in terms of the Indian Heritage Foundation, what do you know about the organization? Well, to be honest, I don't know much about it. That's the whole thing. And as we have the Indian Heritage Foundation, what would you like to see the foundation do for the those of Indian descent in St. Vincent and Grenadines? Well, I think they, 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 they can investigate uh, and as uh, they get information they can build up something that you know reflect the early life of the Indians who were living here uh, and so that I mean children or grandchildren who come after they would be able to read and see the life that their parents or grandparents lived because it was not easy you know I mean, you getting up in a home and you didn't have anything to eat. Well, for us, for me personally, we were fortunate in that my father always kept at least two milking cows, one with calf and the other given milk, so that when one, as we say, dry, you have milk. We were never out of milk. And um, as I mentioned, we had a lot of fruit trees and so on. We would go pick, eat whatever we want. Coconut, hold on coconut, you chop coconut, you eat. What you don't want uh, to eat right away, you, you shell them, you bring them home, and after a while you eat them. Uh, personally, I have really good memories of my early days, you know, because my father was a farmer and we had a big land all the fruit trees you can think about were there and people used to come and buy and so on. So we were able to, you know, survive because he was able to get, on Saturdays when he go down into the hollow to sell breadfruit. Remember, one big breadfruit. Sometimes it's three big breadfruit like this. For penny, three. But we had a lot of breadfruit trees and we used to be big and everything. Sometimes when he comes up on a Saturday, because mostly 
the people from Victoria Village and Stubbs and other areas would come and they will buy. And when he comes home, maybe on Saturday, the Saturday midday, you would either bring either a five shilling or a ten shilling, depending how much you get. And that helped my mother to cater for all of us in the week. Okay. Anything else you'd like to share before we wrap up? Well, except to say that um, at my age, I am quite satisfied with life. I have no regrets. Things were hard growing up. But as I say, I was not the only one that was facing hardship. All other people, whether you were Indians or of other races, they all faced the same situation, you know, and bit by bit, one of the good things was that as the children grew older and as there were opportunities either to go to England, Canada or America, they move out. And from the children going abroad, they were able to send back remittances to their parents and life became a little bit better, you know, but okay. it's all. All right. So, did you enjoy sharing the stories with us? Uh, and oh yes, yeah, that's history. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that's all right, man. All right. So, what we'll do is that we'll extract what we shared with us here, and we'll put it on our website and our on online, so other people can access and hear about the family connections and the experiences. All right. So that's okay with you. Well, I don't have anything to hide. <laughs> <laughs> so let me thank you very much for sharing, and uh, I wish you all the best. Thanks for taking yeah, time. You, you're welcome. God bless. Yes. <laughs>